Hello, and welcome to an overview of NASCO's Pipeline Assessment Certification Program, or PACP. This short video contains a high-level look at NASCO's PACP and includes reasons for the general approaches to closed-circuit television inspection, why coding standardization is important, features and benefits of PACP, review of the coding families, coding examples, and how system owners use datasets derived from PACP inspections. First, let's give a brief introduction to NASCO. NASCO is a trade association whose mission is to set industry standards for the assessment, maintenance, and rehabilitation of underground infrastructure, and to assure the continued acceptance and growth of trenchless technologies. Formed in 1976, NASCO brings together industry professionals dedicated to evaluating, maintaining, and rehabilitating underground pipes. Our members combine their practical experience and technical expertise in a non-competitive environment to set standards and provide guidelines for our industry through education, technical resources, and advocacy. One of the ways NASCO does this is through the PACP, designed to make sure pipe conditions are identified properly and consistently. NASCO also provides other training opportunities, including its Inspector Training Certification Program, also known as ITCP, and allows members to have a voice in setting standards through participation in its many dynamic committees. In addition, NASCO advocates for the entire industry through awareness to fund underground infrastructure and promote all trenchless technologies. Next, let's review the history of PACP. PACP was established by NASCO in 2002 in partnership with WRC. to provide standardization and consistency to the way we evaluate our underground infrastructure. Originally created for wastewater sewers, PACP has evolved to include condition assessment of other types of gravity systems, as well as manholes and laterals, with NASCO now offering Manhole Assessment Certification Program, also called MACP, and Lateral Assessment Certification Program, or LACP, upon successful completion of PACP. PACP is also routinely used for condition assessment of stormwater piping systems, dam levee application, culverts, and other types of piping systems. To date, NASCO has certified nearly 40,000 condition assessment professionals throughout the world. Let's discuss why standardization is important and how using a well-established condition coding system like PACP provides value. To illustrate, let's take a moment and choose which code you might use for this image. Would you identify this as a crack using the letter C or a fracture using the letter F? We will provide the correct answer later. PACP provides a standard set of codes and a standardized method to apply those codes to condition assessment of the infrastructure. It adds value because it allows benchmarking. In addition, it provides a universal language for assessment provides ability to chronicle deterioration, avoids redundant effort, integrates data from various software products, which allows flexibility to add custom fields, improves quality and consistency of observations, and it advances professionalism. The primary objective of PACP is to fully document structural deficiencies and construction features since those defects and features will have the most significant long-term influence on pipe integrity and pipe management. The data collected can then be used to further benefit system owners by scoring and ranking of pipelines, laterals, and manholes, detecting inflow and infiltration, allowing for more informed asset management and capital planning, improving records quality, documenting improvement, optimizing operational and maintenance activities, and determining rate of deterioration. Let's try choosing a code for one more image before we continue. This image shows infiltration, but how is it classified? Choose one, gusher or runner. Again, we will provide the correct answer later. The purpose of PACP training and certification is to standardize the collection and coding of each defect and observation in a consistent and reliable manner for the different types of TV inspections, including maintenance-related activities like cleaning, root removal, and grease mitigation, infiltration and inflow investigation, pre- and post-rehabilitation survey, 
pre-acceptance survey, which can be used to see if there are any defects in a new pipe due to construction prior to accepting it. Routine assessment, capital improvement program assessment, resurvey, sewer system evaluation survey, conversion of pre-existing video to PACP so that the data collected can be added to the database for future comparisons. After collecting the data, you may ask, how is it used? Industry standards, such as the ISO 55000 Asset Management Package or equivalent, industry regulations, and consent decrees have increased the need for utilities to competently and expediently answer the following asset management questions. What do I own? Where are my assets located? In what condition are my assets? What is the next step? There is always a next step. What should be done to optimize maintenance of the system? What repair, replacement, or rehabilitation work needs to be done? How much does it cost? By utilizing PACP to answer these questions, utilities will have access to fact-based data to ascertain the state of each asset in the system. This allows utilities to efficiently assess the condition or likelihood of failure of each asset. Along with determining the consequence of failure and any mitigation efforts to determine the business risk exposure, the utility can prioritize, budget, and schedule various operation, maintenance, renewal, or replacement tasks over time. This can be accomplished since defects are correctly identified and coded, regardless of how many defects are encountered in the segment. The data are then used as a basis for the following. Create an archive of all descriptive pipe system data. Develop a condition rating for each pipe segment. Display results on a map. Provide follow-up recommendations. Establish benchmarks to compare with future inspections of the same line. This provides the ability to chronicle deterioration. Establish reinspection frequencies and or repair, rehabilitation, or replacement needs. Standardized data collection is necessary to accomplish this. With PACP, we have organization, tracking, forecasting, and prioritization capabilities for rehabilitation and replacement planning. Now that we've outlined the history, the importance of standardization, and how the data are used, let's look at the PACP inspection. A PACP inspection produces a summary of general information regarding a pipe's location and attribute data, such as diameter, material, and shape. It also provides a detailed assessment of all visible defects, features, and other observations. The electronic deliverable is an access database that can be easily incorporated into most municipalities' data management system and a video recording that is easily transferable through portable hard drives, DVD, or other electronic media such as FTP sites. Appendix B contains codes that are categorized into four families. Structural defects, O&M observations, construction features, miscellaneous features, Let's choose a few codes from each coding family to highlight so you can see PACP in action. Remember the quizzes from earlier in the video? Did you get the correct answers? Let's find out. From the structural defect code family, let's take a closer look at cracks versus fractures, broken versus whole, as well as surface damage. First up, cracks and fractures. The distinction between the two is very important when coding. Fractures are visibly open, while cracks are not. See the difference? The image on the left is a crack, which is not visibly open, and the image on the right is a fracture, which is visibly open. Did you choose correctly? Let's take a deeper look at coding a fracture. In this particular case, we need to add a descriptor, the letter L, to the code, because this fracture is longitudinal which is parallel to the direction of flow, or FL. It's marked as continuous because it extends for a specified distance and is located at one o'clock. Next up, broken or whole. Again, the distinction between the two is very significant, which is why it is important that a certified PACP professional is coding. Broken, or the letter B, is used when pieces are noticeably displaced, while whole or the letter H, is used when the pipe material is clearly missing. 
In this example, the pipe is broken at a joint from 10 to 3. Note that pieces of the pipe are displaced from their original position. The last example within the structural defect coding family is surface damage. This group of codes is used to describe a wide range of pipe material surface damage failures caused by hydrogen sulfide or other chemical attack, for instance. In this image, the reinforcement used in the concrete pipe is projecting, so we would code this as SRP, which stands for Surface Damage Reinforcement Projecting, at joint from 8 to 4. It is also coded as a continuous defect. From the Operation and Maintenance Coding family, which describe various types of foreign objects found in pipes that may interfere with the operation of the system, we'll take a look at coding roots, infiltration, and deposits. Root codes, represented by the letter R, are used to describe where roots enter a pipe through defects in the pipe wall, pipe connections, pipe joints, or service laterals. In this example, there are roots at the joint that are not causing a significant reduction in cross-sectional area, less than 5%. So it is coded as RFJ, Roots Fine Joint, from 7 to 4. Also from the O&M family of codes is infiltration, represented by the letter I. Infiltration occurs when groundwater enters into the pipe through a defect or porous area. So, how did you do on the second quiz from earlier in the video? Find out next. In this example, we have a steady stream of water entering at a joint. So we'll code it as IRJ, which stands for Infiltration Runner Joint, from 12 to 1. The final example for this coding family is Deposits, which are defined in three subgroups, Attached, Settled, or Ingress. In this particular case, material such as sand or silt has been washed into the pipe from the surrounding ground. It is coded as DNF, Deposits Ingress Fine, and it's impeding the flow by roughly 40% at the joint from 2 to 8. The third family of codes is Construction Features. These codes are used to describe various features and conditions associated with the methods used to construct and connect pipes. We will highlight the following code groups within this family. Taps, access points, and line codes. Tap codes are used to describe various kinds of taps connecting the service pipe from buildings to the main sewer. In this example, the break-in tap, or a portion of it, intrudes into the sewer main. It is coded as TBI at 12. The value column, dimension 1 and 2, are completed to show the tap diameter and amount of intrusion, respectively. The next code group of the Construction Features family that we'd like to highlight is Access Points, represented by the letter A. All inspections must begin and end, unless abandoned, at a defined access point. In this case, the access point is a catch basin, so we would code it as ACB which stands for Access Point Catch Basin. Remarks are used to provide additional information. Moving on to line codes, or the letter L. These codes are used to describe a visible change in the direction of the pipe. In this brick sewer, the line changes direction to the right, so it would be coded as LR, which stands for Line Right, and a value of 25% is added based on the degree change. It is also continuous because it extends more than three feet. And last but not least, the miscellaneous feature family of codes includes general features and defects that are not included elsewhere. We will be showing examples of shape and size change, water level sag, and survey abandoned. This image is an example of a miscellaneous shape or size change, which is coded MSC at 19.3 feet. Since it's a non-circular pipe, the new height and width are entered into the value dimension 1 and dimension 2 columns, respectively. Moving on to the next example, MWLS, which stands for Miscellaneous Water Level Sag. This is used to indicate the presence of a sag, dip, or low spot in the pipe. In this case, it's a continuous defect with a value of 50%, which represents the percentage of sag. Our final coding example is MSA, or Miscellaneous Survey Abandoned. 
which is used when the survey cannot be completed for any reason. In this case, the survey was abandoned at 296 feet due to a collapsed pipe, which is noted in the remarks column. So why is PACP training and certification so important? Assessment is the first step in determining how to manage assets with time and funding limitations. It provides consistent, reliable, and defendable data. The data collected are used to make decisions regarding maintenance and rehabilitation of the system. Professionalism of the TV inspection industry is advanced by using the standard. Communities benefit through safe and healthy water and wastewater systems that are properly maintained. Certified PACP pros are all environmentalists, preventing sewage from polluting streams and rivers every day. Become a PACP Pro today. Classes are scheduled by our certified trainers across the US, Canada, Central America, and South America, and are available in English, Spanish, and French Canadian. Go to nasco.org to find a PACP class, trainer, or to find NASCO videos, courses, and technical resources. PACP is a prerequisite for MACP and LACP and can be taught together in one class. PACP certification is valid for a period of three years and recertification may be achieved online or in a classroom. In addition to providing credentials to properly code pipe conditions as a PACP certified individual, continuing education units are available. To learn more, visit nasco.org.